with me Come on and talk to me I really wanna know what you All right, you guys, happy Wednesday, happy Black History Month. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to this episode of the Green Tea Room. I really appreciate y'all. I see the memes and the gifts. I see all the Janet Jackson fans are in the house. So we have to talk about this topic. Um, as you guys know, I'm a big Janet Jackson fan, as many of you guys are as well. And um, one thing I've always liked about Janet is that she's definitely been more of a private celebrity. You know, like we grew up in the generation where celebrities, they had, there was like this mystique about them. You know what I'm saying? It was a difference between celebrities and just regular people. And she always had that mystique about her. So it was very dope to finally see her coming out with her official autobiography, you know, via a documentary. So that's one thing I really liked about, about it. Me and my girls were such big Jan Jackson fans, but we was dead broke. And I remember she came to Minneapolis. This was like back in like 97, child. She came for the Velvet Rope Tour. So we all wanted to go, but we didn't have no money. Our parents wouldn't give us money to go because the tickets were pretty expensive. So we're like, okay, well, we still going to go downtown Minneapolis. We're still going to go down there. We'll be able to hear her music on the street. So that was our plan. We're like 16. So we take the bus. We go all the way downtown Minneapolis. We get down to the Target Center and we can't hear shit. <laughs> We was like, abort plan. <laughs> Go to the city center and just shop and play it off. <laughs> but that's how much, you know, fans we were of her. Like, even though we couldn't see her, we was like, okay, we still going to go and just stand outside and hopefully we can hear the tunes. Child, the mind of a 16-year-old hoodie. <laughs> so that is my crazy Miss Jackson, if you're nasty story. But now I've been a big fan of hers and I've learned a lot I learned a lot from watching the documentary. I thought I knew a lot about Janet, but I learned a lot of new things about her as well. So Lady J, you got a chance to watch the documentary. Um, was there anything in particular that like surprised you, shocked you? Like, how do you feel about, let's start with part one. We'll go from part one, and then we'll work our way down to part four. For me, Janet, I always kind of looked at her kind of like, oh, we're you know, we said uh, share the same star sign. I was born in May too. There were a lot of things about her that I was like, wow, I could relate to as a little black girl coming up, living in the Midwest. Um, like I got that about her. Um, but some of the things that I think for me that were most shocking were number one, her attempted her way to get away from her father by marrying. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, the second thing that really just blew my mind was that she made a comment, I think, in the second episode, correct me if I'm wrong, where she says, I'm attracted to people who do drugs. Like, that took me out. I said, girl, because you could relate to, you know, having friends or being in situations where you pick the same type of dude. Like, I think anybody could relate to that. So that was like a shocker to me. Um, and then I think that talk, her talking about the things she wanted to do was shocking as well. Like she wanted to go into business law and Renee's impact on her. It was so much there to talk about, but I really appreciate her kind of giving us opportunity to know more about her while she was still here. So that was great. Yeah. Yeah, she was definitely being very honest. One thing I will say is that um, I knew about like the Jackson Five and I knew about Jack's, uh, Janet and LaToya. I've always heard Reby's name over the years, but I didn't really know much, much about her and I've never really seen her, I don't think. But that woman is like drop dead gorgeous. Like, did y'all see how beautiful Reby was? And then I found out she was like close to 70 years old. Like Reby is beautiful. And she just had like a really, you know, really nice spirit about herself. And it was just really cool to, you know, to hear her listening, to listen to her talk about her little sister, because she said they're 16 years apart. Um, Latoya wasn't there, though. So that was interesting. Latoya wasn't oh, in no, that I, I, Yeah, that wasn't surprising, actually. So the part where they went back to Gary, Indiana, it shocked me because I didn't know that Janet had not been back since she was eight years right. old. She was like, I hadn't been back. And she was surprised by the mural. And Gary, Indiana, 
I've been there one time. I would never personally go back. It's really kind of bad. Like a lot of homes are burnt out and things like that. And, um, you know, they've since turned the home into like a museum. So I thought that was really cool. But you could just tell that she was very humbled because there was like, what, like 10 people who lived in a two bedroom home and the girls all slept on the couch. Um, there was like literally three boys to a bed. So I thought that was really cool just to see like their humble beginnings. And you were saying something about how you didn't know that Janet never really dealt with poverty like the yeah. older kids. Like, that was the one thing that stuck out with me in the first episode was the fact that, dang, like, Janet ain't never really knew struggle because Janet was only there as a toddler. And then they left and went to Encino, what, in 70 or something like that. Janet was born in, like, 68 or something like that. Y'all can correct me with the years, but she never really knew that life. Only the eldest children knew that. Um and then I still can't even remember how many of them it was. I knew Tito was a twin because Tito, babe, the baby died at birth. So I think it was like 11 or 12 of them. I don't know. But yeah, all those kids in that house. Yeah, it's, it was a lot of them. Yeah, I think, I don't think it was, it wasn't uh, Tito. It was Marlon. Oh, okay. It was a baby named Brandon. Thank you. Yeah, for the Brandon correction. was Marlon's twin. Okay, thank yep, you. So he died shortly after, yeah, he died shortly after birth. So there was a lot of Jackson kids. So it's like, I mean, but the most famous ones were, of course, the Jackson Five. And then you had the little sister, Janet. Now, another thing I want to touch on as well, and I don't know if y'all peeped this, but growing up, I had always heard that was always like the legacy attached to Joe Jackson, that he was abusive towards his kids. You know, he was the disciplinarian. They couldn't have fun. They weren't allowed to, you know, play and all this stuff. But what surprised me while watching the documentary is the fact that the white media, they kept homing in on his disciplinary tactics mm -hmm. with his children. And, you know, I, it, it was just very interesting to watch it because I had never seen any of these interviews and they kept bringing it up. So now I'm thinking, is that why by the time we came around in the 90s, we all felt like Joe had abused these kids because they had been planting seeds? Because there was even in the one interview, they were saying, well, you know, how do you get them to perform and, you know, be on task? And what do you do if Michael misbehaves or Randy? Right. And he was saying, well, I'll make them, you know, take out the trash. You know, Michael won't get allowance. But they kept homing in on that. I wanted to ask you, do you have to ever take any of them over your knee or use any other methods of disciplining this uh, lively group you've got here? I have a way, you know, like. When Randy don't do right, we make him take out all the garbage or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fair. Yeah, but what about Michael? If Michael, does, Michael always does right, is he? Always? No, not all the time. You know, Michael, he, he likes to lead. And, you know, he's a lead singer. Uh, the way we uh, discipline Michael is sort of like uh, cut down on his allowance. Yeah. Yeah, we don't uh, give him as much money to spend. <laughs> <laughs> My parents disciplined all of us. And that's how we as a people, we raised our kids. But you turn around and you give them love. You know, this is, I, I love you. I'm here for you. Discipline without love is tyranny. And tyrants, they were not. They just loved us and wanted us to be the best that we could possibly be. Now, let me say something else to y'all, why it really bothered me. Um, there was a group back then. I'm sure some of the older folks may know, but the Osmonds, the Osmonds were like the white version, quote unquote, you know, of the Jackson five. It was the Osmond brothers and they had the little sister Marie Osmond. Y'all remember Marie was a talk show host, Donnie Osmond. Well, if y'all don't know the name that the Osmonds had that Hollywood gave them, you can look this up on Wikipedia, but this was on an old documentary I watched years ago on VH1. They were called the one take Osmonds. Okay. In order for kids to be able to hit singing, dancing, you know, to be able to even do live television in one take, to me, what was the father doing to those kids to the point where their nickname was the one take Osmond? And they would say with so much pressure that when they went on set, when they were booked for jobs, people expected them to get whatever they handed to them. It could be a fresh script to get it in one take. But what 
what really bothered me is as I'm watching the, the Jackson documentary, I'm like, I don't recall the white mainstream media ever asking the Osmond father, you know what I'm saying, what were his disciplinary tactics for his children to be nicknamed the one take Osmonds? Mm-hmm. Y'all not ready for that conversation? I peeped that. That was one of the things that I noted to myself. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Hey, tea sippers To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.